this is um, well, in its currently semi-finished state now, um, in its runnable condition. So, talk you some of the features. So it has 9 gram servo which does the steering. And it does have front suspension, but it doesn't work very well at the moment. That needs, that's going to be improved in order to help it steer because um, obviously it's got a lot more grip on the, um, the tracks that it has on the front wheel. So the steering is a bit temperamental. So it's using my standard RC gear. Um, it's got Fly Sky receiver, uh, 18 amp ESC, and it's using a 2,000 milliamp power uh, lithium ion battery, not lithium polymer battery, which I bought specifically for this one, as it slots neatly in the front. So it has a aluminium heatsink on the motor, and the gearing goes on the motor the 22. 22 um, gears, then it goes to 30, I think 54, then it's 22 to 38 twice, and then has a drive which goes to like a central gear which reverses the drive to the final drive sprocket which is at the back instead of on the real one it'd be at the front, but it made it easy to have it in the back. Um, obviously this will be adjusted so it actually sits flat at some point, and. Um, I've got still going to make the front mud guard and the rear towing bit which will hold the towing assembly at slash the parachute. Um, so it weighs currently seven, I think it weighs about 750 grams with the battery. Um, and I printed this over really a weekend. Um, the main body I printed over a weekend and the gears I printed in a couple of evening, evenings like these take it's like 20 minutes for the bees ones are like 15 for them. Um, it's held together most of its 2mm screws but it does use some 3 mm in the more structural places. Um, and that's really all the features. The track is made of TPU, black TPU like the tyres and um, it's printed round and then obviously stretched round the thing and this works really well, it has a lot of grip and it's a lot simpler than my original idea doing something like I did on my tank project um, of using individual, like a real track. This is just a lot simpler. I didn't think this would actually be flexible enough but it has actually worked well. So the suspension in real life would be torsion bars with um, these interleave road wheels. I decided to just do interleave road wheels on oscillating bogies with coil springs. The coil springs aren't on currently but these basically can rotate back and forth. They're a bit tight at the moment. Um, to allow suspension and the ones on the east side of this um, central thing which keeps the track from coming off. You might be able to actually notice that the track the track on the back actually comes on and off sort of repeatedly um, but it just always seems to be able to get itself back on. Um, so originally it had a toost idler sprocket but I changed that along with the gearing because originally it was just going to be 22 to 54 then um, 22 to 36 once um, and that would be the total gear reduction. Now it's got 22 synthetics, I think, in twice. Um, mine should be three times, I can't remember now. Um, and I also, that improved it, but it, I still had problems. So I decided to change to this dry sprocket. And the reason was because this one, when it comes off, it just, because it's been forced around and around, it just clears the, the um, problem. On the front, it wasn't being forced around, it jam. And then it would just keep catching the track, and the track would just be spinning on it freely, but it would be catching it, which made it run really roughly. So its absolute top speed on 2S is 2.5 miles per hour, something around there. Um, but most of the time I drive it really at minimum speed, which is probably about half a mile an hour. So it's very slow, but it does work. Um, its top speed is kind of scaled, probably. I don't know the top speed of the real one. Um, so obviously the paint, this is just like... Um, Revel sort of paint which I had and sort of gone a bit dry which I added some water to and washed it on and I, I quite like the effect it makes it look a bit like it looks a bit worn out I also need to get these to fix together so the next thing which is going to happen with this um, is that there might be a Mark II variant which will have adjustable track speed so at the moment both these tracks just drive as solid solid they're fixed together basically so it always just drive forward, which means the steering is bad and you can't and the real one you could drive it without the front wheel um by using a clutch and brake system on the back on the drive sprocket. 
But the next thing that's going to happen is this, is it's going to be, we're going to add parachutes and see if it's air droppable. Um, it would be very interesting. So that's the end of this, and watch a few more videos of it going off-road. Steering is not exactly what you call responsive.